The name of this book is called Schroeder. Music is my life. The boy with the blonde hair sitting in the seat that has his name on the back is called Schroeder. This book is written by Charles M. Schultz, who did a comic strip called Peanuts, and Schroeder is one of the gang in that Peanuts gang. And on the front, you can see a comic strip that goes down from top to bottom. The little boy Schroeder is playing his piano with some Beethoven music. And then he has images of a face come up. And that face belongs to another character in the strip called Lucy. And at the end, Schroeder says, Don't tell me I've grown accustomed to that face. The YouTube clip that's linked here, you can copy it and paste it in, is Tony Bennett and Count Basie doing a performance of I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face. So in a lot of the Schroeder and Peanuts comic strips, there are things for children and things for young readers and learners, and there are things for grown-ups, and they're usually mixed all together. Schroeder, Music is My Life, shows Schroeder at the piano playing fancy music like Beethoven, the famous composer, played, but also sometimes playing simple music. And he's the one, if you watch the Peanuts Christmas, Charlie Brown Christmas special, when they have all the nice jazz music, he's the one playing um, all the music at the piano. The YouTube um, web address, uh, written here, will take you to a little tiny clip from the Charlie Brown Christmas special where Schroeder is being called Fur Elise. The very first drawing of Schroeder is with him being just a little infant baby boy able to barely sit up. That happened a long time ago, but that's what Schroeder looked like when he first joined the strip. If there's a grown-up helping you with this today, uh, he or she might want to look at the New York Times article from 2009, January 14th, where a scholar has traced all of the Beethoven music that Mr. Schultz drew in his trip, and it really was Beethoven music. The story on the left side of this page is called left side of the page is called Speechless. Lucy says, anyone who thinks next year is going to be better than this year is crazy. We're all going downhill. Everything is hopeless. Evil surrounds us. Nothing is any good. Then she turns back and looks at Schroeder. You don't love me, do you? She goes on. In my book about Beethoven, I've made a few improvements. For instance, instead of playing the piano, I have him playing an electric guitar. Also, in my book, he doesn't have stomach pains. I've updated it to tennis elbow. She goes on. I am highly susceptible to flattery. Just the slightest compliment will cause me to melt. And she stares at Schroeder for a long time. She gives up and says, Or so I have always imagined. On the right side of the page at the top, If you really loved me, you'd stop playing that piano and talk to me. She waits. She looks back at him. Oh, that's called answering without answering. And then the next little story. Lucy says, I've decided something. For Valentine's Day this year, don't give me anything fancy like candy or flowers. I'll settle for a kiss on the nose and a hug. And she looks back at him with a sweet smile. He doesn't notice, and she says, or a whole lot less. And then this is another one that's kind of for grown-ups and kind of for young readers, because it refers to a famous movie, Casablanca. Lucy's leaning on the piano. She looks back at Schroeder. He's picking out a little tune. She thinks, and she says, play it again, Sam. Down at the bottom, she's leaning on Schroeder's piano again. She says, why don't you just come right out and admit it, that everything, every move I make fascinates you? He says nothing. She says to herself, subtleties are lost on a musician. Lucy says, I've been thinking about us, you know, you and me. I suppose there comes a time when most relationships simply come to an end. Maybe that's happened to us. I guess it will be better all around if we just part, sort of friendly, and admit that the love we once had is now gone. 
These things happen every day. I guess we just think it'll never happen to us. But it did. We had our love, but now it's gone. And then she says, <laughs> Boy, I really had you fooled, didn't I? I really had you worried. <laughs> I'm sorry if I upset you, really. I, I had you going, didn't I? <laughs> I had no idea you'd get so upset. Rats. Top of the next page on the right. Enough already. I'm so worried about poor Charlie Brown lying there in the hospital. He's got to get well. He's got to. Oh, boo so um. Schroeder responds by saying, It's interesting that you should cry over him when you're the one who's always treated him so mean. And stop wiping your tears with my piano. Next little story. Lucy walking away with a smile. Schroeder walks up, looks at his piano, sits down, says, All right, who painted rally stripes on my piano? Sort of a baseball joke. Next story. Lucy's leaning on the piano. Some people find it difficult to put their feelings into words. If I were you, Schroeder, and there was something I wanted to say to a certain somebody, I'd say it with music. Schroeder says, That's an idea. And he bangs down with one really loud note. On the left side here, Schroeder comes up looking for his piano. She says, you're looking for your piano, right? Guess what? I washed it. You what? I'll bet that piano hasn't been cleaned in two years. I put it in the washer. You can't put a piano in the washer. Oh, don't get so excited. It came out fine. From a washer? I will admit one thing, however. I don't think I should have put it in the dryer. The piano shrunk to a little tiny piano. Top of the next page, Lucy says, I see you got your new piano. Yes, and if you scratch it with your stupid elbows, I'll pound you. She looks at him, and then she says, You're cute when you're indignant. Next one, Lucy brings him some flowers in a vase. Did Beethoven ever have a girl who brought flowers for his piano? Schroeder said, no. Beethoven never had a girl who bugged him by bringing flowers for his piano. Lucy says, that isn't exactly what I asked. Next one, Lucy says, you know what you should do on Beethoven's birthday? You should take me out to dinner. Schroeder says, I wouldn't take you to a bubblegum chew. Lucy turns around, blows a big bubblegum bubble, and says, You wouldn't? Down at the bottom, Schroeder says, Don't come in. Why not? Because I can't practice playing the piano if you're leaning on it all the time. If I promise not to lean on your piano, may I come in? Hmm, this is better anyway. At the top, there's some musical notations, and it looks like Lucy is sleeping on top of them. Lucy says, I have a question I'd like to ask you. What makes you think Beethoven was better than Elton John? Schroeder stands up, puts his hands out, and says, Congratulations! She's puzzled while he runs away. He comes running back and says, Here's your trophy. You have just won the award for the most stupid question of the year. You will also receive a scroll with your name on it and two tickets to a local matinee. Lucy walks away. I was going to make an acceptance speech, but I was afraid I'd win another trophy. These pages are about Schroeder and the rest of the Peanuts gang. So at the very top of the page, you see Charlie Brown resting on Schroeder's piano the way Lucy usually does. And then there's a little story with Linus resting on his piano. Linus says, I'm taking up a collection to send Snoopy to the Olympics. How much do you have so far? Eighteen cents. 18 cents? How in the world is he going to get to France on 18 cents? Does he have to go first class? Then there's another story in the middle of the page. He's gone. I can't believe it. He's gone. My dog has gone to France to skate in the Olympics. How does he th think he's going to get to France? It's ridiculous. Incidentally, did you have a good time on Beethoven's birthday? Schroeder says, good grief, and then he screams out, I forgot. Down at the bottom, Charlie Brown in his baseball cap is leaning on the piano. 
Last year was the worst baseball season our team has had yet. I'm really worried about our team, Schroeder. I think we're getting worse. Schroeder says, Beethoven had his problems too. That's what I like. A nice, relevant statement. Top of the next page you see um, a picture of Frida and Lucy and Schroeder. Lucy hears some music and walks toward it. She sees Frida leaning on the piano. What are you doing here? Who wants to know? Maybe I just like music. Do you like Beethoven? What? If you're going to hang around here, you've got to like Beethoven. All right, but I'll just have a small glass. <laughs> and Schroeder is horrified that Frida doesn't know that Beethoven's a musical composer, and he rips his piano away. Lucy's lying flat on the ground with Frida and says, You blew it, kid. These comic strip stories are about summer music camp. At the top of the page you see Marcy in the back and Schroeder and Snoopy on top of Snoopy's doghouse. So the story starts with Charlie Brown leaning on Schroeder's piano. Schroeder says, Guess what? I think I'm going to a summer music camp. The trouble is, I don't know how to get there. Should I fly or take the bus or what? You need a travel agent, Charlie Brown says. Where am I going to find one around here? Schroeder turns around, you see, but Lucy, sitting behind a sign at a little stand, and the sign says, Ace Travel Agency. She says to him, Here you are, sir. I booked you on Flight 54. First class, no smoking. Lunch will be served in flight. The movie is Citizen Kane. Enjoy your trip. I never knew a travel agent could be so helpful. We'll even kiss you goodbye. But he walks away. I have to look for a magazine. Down at the bottom, Charlie Brown says, So long, Schroeder. Have a nice time at summer music camp. Thank you. I'm still not sure I... Do you wish to check your piano, sir? Well, I... There you go. No problem. Linus throws it into the doghouse. Schroeder looks and says, This is my plane? Snoopy, pretending to be a World War I flying ace with flying goggles on his head, and a flying scarf on his neck says, 54, calling tower. Top of the next page. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your stewardess speaking. Our flight has been delayed temporarily while the mechanic repairs a minor problem. And there's little Woodstock with his baseball cap on, kicking the side of the doghouse. Bam, 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 kick, kick, kick. Snoopy says, give it another kick. I thought it sounded kind of funny on the last trip. Marcy's back up on top of the doghouse and says, Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready for takeoff. Please fasten your seat belts. Also, make sure that your seat is in an upright position. Schroeder says, I don't have a seat. Then make sure the plane is in an upright position. I've never taken a long trip on an airplane before. Is it safe? Oh, yes. This plane has all the latest backup systems. What are they? If we have any trouble, we just back up. Marcy says, Our in-flight movie today will be Citizen Kane. Movie? We get to see a movie? Well, it isn't exactly a movie. And there's Snoopy with some puppets doing uh, a scene from the real movie Citizen Kane, and he's saying, Rosebud! In the middle. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to serve lunch. We would like to give you a choice between rack of lamb and beef bordelaise, but we can't. So, how about a banana? <laughs> At the bottom, I must admit this has been a very smooth flight so far. Yes, but it probably would have been better if you hadn't mentioned it. And they all go flying. Top of the next page. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at our destination. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a stop. Clunk. Marcy says, don't mind him, sir. He faints after every landing. Goodbye, sir. Did you enjoy the flight? Yes, thank you. No, I'm sorry. I never date the passengers. I didn't ask for a date. Where's baggage return? Where's my piano? Bonk. His piano comes bouncing out at him. Schroeder looks around and says, Hey, this is where we started. 
We've been flying all day and going no place. I'm supposed to be in music camp. What happened? Snoopy with a little disguise on, or maybe his brother Spike, I can't tell. Snoopy's standing there behind a, a sawhorse and says, Sorry, sir, this section of the airport terminal is closed for repairs. So Schroeder plays piano, but he also plays catcher on the neighborhood baseball team. He walks out to the mound to talk to the pitcher, Charlie Brown. You want to know something? Baseball is our country's number one spectator sport. Horse racing is second. In the outfield, Lucy, sitting on a hobby horse, says, I can go either way. In the middle, are you the catcher? Of course I'm the catcher. What are you doing here? What are... And she pulls back his catcher's mask and lets it go whop. She walks away and says, nice catch, dear heart. <laughs> At the bottom there, Schroeder walks out and tosses the ball to Charlie Brown. Did you see how I struck out that last kid? Pretty good pitching, huh? Schroeder says, yeah, that was that kid who's been sick in bed all winter. His doctor said he's going to be all right, but to get out in the sun. He also doesn't see very well, and he's never played baseball before. Charlie Brown's left on his own on the pitching mound. Sometimes a catcher can know too much about the opposition top of the next page. Schroeder says, educational costs are really going up. My dad says it can cost almost $16,000 to go to college. Charlie Brown says, I'm hoping for a baseball scholarship. Lucy comes up to the mound and says, ah! <laughs> Charlie Brown is left by himself. I didn't even know she was listening. In the middle, don't give up, Charlie Brown. We can take these guys. Just bear down and throw as hard as you can. We can win if we really try. Schroeder walks back to the plate. Lucy says, That's the spirit, dear heart. <laughs> down at the bottom. Ready to start, Charlie Brown? All set. My arm feels great. She's getting ready to say it again. I can just feel it. That's what Schroeder's thinking. If she says it again, I'll scream. I know. She's just waiting to say it. She... Catch a good game, dear heart. And he goes, ah! Lucy and Schroeder are talking. He's got his baseball gear on. And he says, you want me to wear these? Put them on. I'll bet you look great. It's for our school paper swimsuit issue. He puts them on over all of his catcher's gear. See, Lucy says, very macho. In the middle, Schroeder walks out to the mound to talk to Charlie Brown. One finger will mean just try and get it over the plate. Two fingers will mean try not to throw it over the backstop. And three fingers will mean we'll all be glad when the season's over. He walks away. Charlie Brown says to himself, catchers are weird. When the seasons change, Schroeder becomes a hockey player. Lucy skates up to him on the ice and says, Schroeder, how would you like to be my partner in the Christmas skating show? Forget it. We hockey players wouldn't be caught dead in a pair of those tippy-toe skates. With a big smile on his face, Snoopy comes right up to Lucy and spins and says, Looking for a partner? Check out this double axle, sweetie. Top of the next page, Charlie Brown's on the pitching mound. Winds up, makes the throw. Schroeder comes out to the mound. Ow! Charlie says, What happened? What's the matter? I got hit on the finger with a foul tip. Is it going to be all right? Are you going to be able to play? I'm not sure. I'll have to find out. Schroeder runs into the house, sits down at his piano, plays Beethoven's Hammerklavier Sonata, runs out of the house, runs back to the baseball field and says, It's all right. I can play. Charlie Brown says, That isn't exactly what I meant. The story on the left is called piano -less. At home, picking up her phone, Lucy says, Hello, Schroeder? Now that you and I are through, why do you keep calling me on the phone? Schroeder says, I, I didn't call you. You called me. Lucy says, How come you never get a wrong number when you need one? In the middle, she goes up to the house and rings the doorbell. Hi, I just stopped by to thank you again for the mink stole you gave me for Christmas. Schroeder says, I did not give you a mink stole for Christmas. 
Lucy screams at him, I'll say you didn't. At the bottom, Lucy knocks on the door. Now that you and I are through, Schroeder, why don't you stop hanging around my house? This isn't your house. This is my house. Lucy says, it's amazing how stupid you can be when you're in love. The top of the next page is called Little Sweetness. Lucy's leaning on the piano. If I could order you to send me some flowers, would you do it? No, I'd go to jail first. He keeps playing some more Beethoven. She says, I'd come to visit you. In the middle of the page, she comes in on Schroeder while he's just starting to play. Happy Beethoven's birthday. And she gives him a kiss on the nose. Smack. Lucy walks away saying, on Beethoven's birthday, it has become traditional to kiss everyone on the nose. When Snoopy leans in toward her, she says, forget it. At the bottom, Lucy's leaning on Schroeder's piano and she says, I think I'd like to take piano lessons. Wouldn't you like to give me piano lessons? No. We could sit side by side. I think I'll switch to the violin. On the left, Lucy comes in carrying a cupcake. Surprise! What's this? It's a cupcake. Happy Beethoven's birthday. And Schroeder actually leans over and gives her a kiss on the cheek. Smack! He says, you remembered. I can't believe it. That's amazing. And then Snoopy looks at Lucy. And she thinks it was Snoopy that kissed her and not Schroeder because she had her eyes closed. And she says, ah, dog lips. I've been kissed by dog lips. Schroeder's going to explain, says, no, wait, Lucy, wait. And poor Snoopy's left there thinking, what's wrong with dog lips? The little story on the right side of the page is just Schroeder and Snoopy. So Snoopy's sitting on top of Schroeder's piano, and he's sleeping. <laughs> so Schroeder sits down to play anyway. Snoopy's fast asleep, lying down, Beethoven music going on. But then Schroeder notices Snoopy there. And he takes his fist, and he bangs on the piano keys. And Snoopy lands, but he lands on the piece of music. Then he smiles at Schroeder. And he looks at the piece of music, starts to climb through it, and then breaks out of it. He's dancing on Schroeder's piano. Schroeder says, look, dog, this is a brand new piano. If there's one thing it doesn't need, it's a lot of claw marks. Snoopy keeps dancing and says, how about a distressed finish? Back to Schroeder and Lucy. Lucy says, sometimes I think you don't realize that you could lose me. Are you sure you want to suffer the tortures of the memory of a lost love? Do you know the tortures of the memory of a lost love? It will haunt you night and day, Lucy says, losing her temper and kicking the piano. Then she says, it's awful, and she bangs down on the piano. She says, you wake up at night screaming, and she's jumping on the piano. You can't eat, you can't sleep, you want to smash things. You'll hate yourself and the world and everybody in it. And then she sobs and down on the ground she's crying, Oh! Schroeder doesn't know what to say and he's staring at the destroyed pieces of his piano. And Lucy looks up and she says, Are you sure you want to risk losing me? This is the way Lucy and Schroeder looked when they first got together at his piano. Things don't change very much over the years. Lucy, of course, is screaming at Schroeder and saying, Hey! Hey, pay attention to me. This is not all of the characters from the Peanuts gang, but it's a pretty good group shot of all the people who showed up in that comic strip over the years. And you can see Schroeder down there at the bottom petting Snoopy on the head. You can see Lucy yelling at her brother Linus on the pitching mound, and right in the middle of the pitching mound, you can see Charlie Brown. The other characters from the Peanuts gang that are here in this picture are Marcy with the glasses and the red balloon. Um, there's Franklin with the dark orangish red top and the blue pants. There's Peppermint Patty 
holding a baseball with her green shirt on. There's Sally Brown um, with her pink polka dot dress on and her pink uh, socks. Uh, way to the far right is Pigpen with his overalls and all the dust around him. And up in the air is Woodstock, uh, Snoopy's friend, who's a bird. So if you like these characters, it's fun to look at the way Mr. Schultz drew them. Um, it's fun to read them to yourself. And there's so many of them, you can find them very easily. This one was called Schroeder, Music is My Life. And it was written the way all the Peanut stories are written by Charles Schultz. <laughs>